What's up everyone, today we're going to be installing the 800 series Zoo's USB stick along with the double switch and we're going to be able to control everything from Apple HomeKit. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so just a quick unboxing. It's very simple really. Um, you just have this little thing here. It's literally just a USB stick. So this is the new 800 series stick and this is the new 800 series double switch. So it's supposed to be long range, so we'll see how that works out. Anyways, um, yeah, so we're going to plug this into my server, and let's see how everything is set up. All right, let's go ahead and get started right away. So the first thing you need is VMware Player, and I'm downloading it from TechSpot because as of recording this video, the official website is down. So download VMware Player. You don't need works. Uh, you don't need the paid version, you just need the free version. And then also we're gonna go ahead and type in Home Assistant and we're gonna download, so click Get Started, Installation, and then scroll down. I think it's all at the bottom. Yeah, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and choose the Install Home Assistant on Windows. And then we're gonna download the VMware Workstation file here. And you can follow along the video, but also here we have the requirements and here is the instructions on what I'm going to be doing. All right, so VMware Player is done. So we're going to go ahead and install VMware Player. And it looks like it needs me to restart to install the VC redistribute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and restart. All right, restarted and now we're going to install VMware. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this and click next. And then um, I'll leave updates. I'm going to uncheck the improvement program. Yeah, I'll leave the updates. And then click next, next, and then install and let it install. So it's going to take a minute here. All right, so it's done. And now we're going to go ahead and extract the file that we downloaded for Home Assistant. So extract it. All right, so we have the extracted file. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open VMware Player. And the first time you open it, it's probably gonna ask you about the license thing. Um, just go ahead and, I mean, I'm not using it for commercial use, so it's free to use. So go ahead and choose that. And now we're gonna go ahead and click create a new virtual machine. And I'm gonna choose the last option, which is I will install my operating system later. And then we're gonna go ahead and click next. Here, you're gonna to wanna to choose Linux. And then once you choose Linux for the version, you're gonna to try to find other Linux, the 5.x kernel 64 bit, here it is, click next. For the name, I'm gonna follow the official tutorial. So it's home dash assistant. And then that'll be the name of the VM and also the folder in the documents. So click next and then here I'm going to increase the disk size and then I'm also going to make this a single file just so it's easier. All right, so click next and then here we're going to click customize hardware. So for memory, um, I'm going to give it three gigabytes of RAM. I have plenty of RAM so I can spare that. You can do two gigs if you want. For CPUs, I'm gonna leave it at two. And then the most important thing, or I guess first we can turn off the CD drive, but network adapter. So this is important. What you wanna do is on the right side here, you see that it says bridged. So we're gonna click bridged and then you need to click configure adapters and select the adapter that you're gonna be using for internet. So for me, I connect to the internet using the first adapter you see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that only and click OK. And now I'm going to close this and click Finish. So before we can start this, there's something else we need to do. So you're going to go ahead and go to your Documents folder. And then I'm also going to, actually I'm going to copy this first real quick. So this is the VM file we downloaded. So go to Documents and we're going to click Virtual Machines and Home Assistant. So here you have this file. We're gonna delete this file and we're gonna paste the file that we downloaded from the internet. And now we're gonna rename the file to home-assistant. 
And now we need to change the VMX file. So right click it and click edit in notepad. And then here at the very top, we're going to add a line below the first line. So click enter and type in firmware. And then I think there's a space, space, and then EFI. So firmware space uh, equals space EFI. And then file, save as. And then you're going to change a text document to all files. And you're going to click save. And then yes to replace it. And that's that. So now we could open the VM finally in VMware. So just click Home Assistant, so it'll take a second, and then click Play Virtual Machine. And now the VM is going to boot up. So here, you don't have to do anything in the boot by itself. I'm just going to click Remind Me Later on the VMware Tools, and we're going to let it boot up. All right, so it booted up, and right here it tells you a URL. So we're going to type that URL in our web browser. So the URL is... It's home assistant dot local and then we're gonna put the two eight one two three and there we go. As you can see it says preparing home assistant may take up to twenty minutes. So we're gonna come back once this is done preparing itself. Alright, so it's done. We're gonna click create my smart home and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this information here. So this is you're gonna be your local username and password. So fill that in. Once you fill it in, you'll have a home location, which you can set or you don't need to set, it's up to you. And then after the home location, you'll have these analytical options. I'm gonna leave everything turned off. And then here, as you can see, it found some devices in my home already. So we're just gonna click finish. You don't have to worry about that right this second. And here we go. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and download the integration for HomeKit. It's called HomeKit Bridge. So go to Home Assistant website, type in the integrations, and then here you see all these integrations. We're going to click HomeKit Bridge, and then on the top right, you're going to click Add to Integration. And then if you see this page, just copy and paste this URL into a new tab. And then once you do that, you should see this. Do you want to set up HomeKit? I'm going to click OK. And then here, select the domains to be included. So it's going to ask you which categories you want for HomeKit. So here are the default options. Let's see. I think everything looks fine for now. Yeah, I'm going to click Submit. And then to complete pairing, click notification. So we'll click submit. And then here is your bridge that it just made. So it's going to ask you which area you want it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click the little arrow here. And then I'm going to put it in living room. And then click finish. So now on the left here, we're going to click notifications. And this is the QR code for us. So I'm going to grab my phone. So on my phone, I'm going to open up HomeKit and scan this. And then as you can see, there's a bridge. It says uncertified. I'm just going to accept. And then here, bridge location. You can put it anywhere you want. I'm just going to put living room. And then give yourself your bridge name. Um, Zeus, actually, I'm just going to call this CS Bridge. That's better. All right, so we did our bridge. It's added. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to click Settings, Add-ons and then add on store. And in the search, we're going to type in Z-Wave. And as you can see here, there's one called JSUI. This is the one we're going to install. So I'm going to click it. And then as you can see, there's a little install button here. So click install. And once you click install, it'll install. And then you're going to click start. And then once it starts, you'll see this stuff on the right side here. So speaking of the right side, there's an open web UI button. So we're going to go ahead and click this button. And by clicking this button, it's going to open the web UI. And then some more statistic usage uh, statistics. I'm just going to click no. And then uh, this is the change log. I'm just going to close this. OK. So now we're going to click um, this little thing here and click settings. And under Z-Wave, you're going to click the down arrow, and then we're going to choose our serial port. 
So click the drop down arrow and then look for the Zoos 8, here it is, 800Z stick. So oops, I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And then we need to generate our keys. So I'm gonna click these refresh buttons. If you get an error like me, just keep, keep clicking refresh until there's no more errors. And then we're gonna choose USA long range for the RF region. And then that should be all you need to set. Everything else can be left for default. There's a save button down here at the bottom. So once you save it, now we're gonna to go to the control panel. As you can see, my USB controller now shows up and it shows power. So we're gonna click settings, devices. We're gonna click add integration and I'm gonna type in Z-Wave again. And this time we're gonna do this one and uncheck supervisor add-in, click submit. And here it's gonna ask you for the URL. Just copy the URL that I put here. I think it should be the same for everyone. Oh, it failed to connect. I need to put a dash there. There we go. And then here, choose the room, click finish. All right. So now I'm going to go to the add on again and click web UI. And now we should be able to add our nodes. So you click this and click manage nodes. And then here you have different options. I'm going to click inclusion and then name. So this is going to be the name of my double switch and the location. So I'm just going to write in living room uh, Hunter. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the living room portion. I'm just write Hunter. The location is living room. I guess I should be more specific. This is the Hunter fan and then click next. And then here you have all these options. You can scan QR code. You can do no encryption. I'm going to click the default and click next. And then now here it says put your device in inclusion mode. So to do this, to put the device in inclusion mode, you go up to your switch and tap three times the up button and it's gonna flash blue. Once it's flashing blue, the program will detect it. As you can see, this changed, so we're gonna click next. Then here it's gonna ask for the DSK pin. This pin is on the switch itself next to the QR code. So make sure you don't make the same mistake as me and have the faceplate installed already. So there we go. We have installed our double switch for the living room. And I'm gonna do this for every other device that we have. Now, once you've done this, you need to go to your devices and you need to go to the home kit bridge. And then here we're gonna click configure. And then I'm gonna go ahead and for the inclusion mode, I'm gonna click include. So, Here's all the options again. Choose all the ones that you want. And I'm gonna click include and click submit. And then here you go. So now we have the switch. So I see Hunter fan, this is the light. And then I don't know why there's two here. I'm just gonna select the one that doesn't have the one. So one is the light, which is on the dimmer. And then one is the switch, which as you can see here, it says switch. So I'm gonna click this and click submit. And then once you click submit, go to your iPhone and, well actually you can even do it from here on the computer. So if you change these switches, as you can see, it can turn on the fan, it can turn on the light. So you can do it from the app on your PC, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you on the phone. All right, so on my phone here, I added everything. So as you can see, everything shows up and as a matter of fact, I actually added all my things. So that fan over there is in the family room. I'm gonna show you right here. I'm gonna click Hunter fan, turn it on. And as you can see, it turns it on. All right, there you have it. That is the Zoos 800 series USB stick along with home automation VM running on my Windows PC. I know the setup takes some time and it's a little complicated at first, but trust me, I've actually been using this for like two months now and it's very nice. It works all the time. As long as the PC doesn't crash or something, knock on wood, I have a 14 gen i9, it works really good. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions and as always subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.